We all know that every commander deck is a seven, but what kind of seven is your deck? I'm Mia, and I like it when my friends don't lie to me during the Rule Zero talk. I'm BZ, and most of my deck's probably about a seven. And we're the Nimpicking Nerds. We are sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., which means if you go to check out when buying Cool Stuff Inc. magic cards, you can use code NERDS at checkout to save 5% on your order. We're also sponsored by Dragon Shield, best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. You can go online, use their EU and US links in the description below, buy some sleeves, and you help out the channel a little bit. What better way to sleeve up your 7 out of 10 deck than with some Dragon Shields? And we're sponsored by Moxfield. There's going to be an ad. You're not going to be able to guess where it is. And happy birthday to everyone's birthday today, along with your pets. And your decks that are all 7s. Happy birthday to your 7 decks as well. So the Commander Power Scale, as we know, uh, we did a video on this a couple years ago. It's outdated. It's It doesn't apply. Uh, we know the problem. Every deck is a 7. Every com everyone says their commander deck is a seven. Not outdated anymore. We fixed it. Not all sevens can be played against each other, though. Now you can differentiate between all the sevens. We've made a concise scale that you can rank your deck against. It's a 10 point scale between 7.0 and 7.9 because we all know that every deck falls into one of those points. Every seven will fall into those categories. This will help you when everyone says their deck is a seven to determine what that actually means. And we're going to give examples of everything, too. So we're going to get started with the 7.0s. This is the lowest power a seven can be. It's also called casual. People usually say, I'm playing casual. Casual, I'm playing a seven. Yeah, you know it's going to be a seven, and this is not going to be able to beat the higher sevens. We're talking about your seven point sevens, eights, and nines. These are often confused for a six, though, but we all know that's false. Yes, we, they can get confused, but the seasoned veterans who've sat down with enough sevens will know when you have a seven point zero or a six. Uh, again, there is no scale for six to seven. It's, it, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. 7.0, 7.1, that's how it's going to go. An example of this deck, these are bare bones decks. Uh, an example, Ashling the Pilgrim and 99 Mountains. There's no ramp, there's no card draw, there's not even any removal, but it's got a game plan. You have your commander and you have 99 other cards. Is that not casual? That feels pretty casual to me. So I think that's where a 7.0 is. You're not going to see a ton of these in the wild. Every once in a while, they're going to show up. But let's go to 7.1. This is where we get into the meat of it. Uh, 7.1 is a pre-con, but you've changed one card. That's why we call it 7.1. One. Mm -hmm. One card is changed. When you pick up a pre-con and you find that one card you're not really a fan of, you know, your land, your creature that's a little bit too expensive, and you change it immediately, that's what takes your deck to a 7.1. Yeah, an example, perfect example here, um, one that you can probably relate to, the Commander 2013 Mind Seas deck, but you cut Demir Guildgate for Watery Grave. This is going to be much more efficient while still keeping that pre-con feel, but is clearly a step up from the 7.0s. You have your choices. It can come in tapped like Demir Gilgate, or you can pay two life, which we have so much of in Commander, and come in untapped. It's basically a duel. That brings us right on over to 7.2. This is a powerful and functional deck. You know, we've worked out some of the kinks that you find at 7.0 at 7.1. We're putting ramp removal and card draw in. But the problem with this, this version of it is every single one of your lands enters the battlefield tapped. Uh, this is a, a common deck building restriction people like to play with, and that's usually why we put it into the 7.2 category. You know this is the lower point of 7 because it's always a turn behind. No land and no mana artifact comes in untapped. It could be a little bit tough to race with these decks, but it still is a 7 because it still has that game plan going for it. Yeah, I mean, you can play any other cards. There's no restriction on any other cards, so the deck could look like anything. You could see a Crater of Behemoth, you could see Rhystic Study, you could see Demonic Tutor, you could see Demir Guildgate. All your lands are going to enter the battlefield tap, though. It's, it's always going to be uh, the case. An example of this, Ramos, Dragon Engine, Mazes End. And, of course, we're not playing any of the good gates. It's just all of the tapped gates, along with a bunch of tapped duels to help us cast our spells. But we're going to be a turn behind. I'd like to point out that sometimes people say that their decks are 7.2s, and you see things like Watery Grave or Temple Garden in them. Just know that you can always find a 7.2, because they will never pay the two life to have it come in untapped. <laughs> Moving on to something with a little bit more power is the 7.3. These are decks that BZ and I really like to build, and they're decks that are $20 budget or less. This can involve anything, including combos, alternate win cons, and stacks pieces, but they have to just be cheaper. You know, Deafening Silence, good stacks piece, and it could be in a 7.3 because it's cheap enough. An example of this is my $20 Yarok initiative deck. You're trying to power through dungeons, but the most important part is, 
it's only worth $19.89. That's the defining feature of these 7.3s. You know, we said you could play combos of win cons and stack pieces, but you don't have to. This is this deck is jank, and it wants to play initiative cards and venture into the dungeon. It just so happens to be one of many decks that fall into the $20 or less category, a.k.a. the 7.3s. You could see anything. You're just not going to see cards that cost more than $20. Absolutely not. Moving on to 7.4, the decks that are worth $20 and one cent or above, I mean, I guess, isn't every deck that isn't $20 or less at least $20 and one cent exactly? Yeah, I mean, I've never seen a commander deck in this category that wasn't worth exactly $20 and one cent, so it's pretty slim. You're not going to see 7.4s that much. An example, um, my Ishkana deck, which is not worth $20.01, so it does fit that, that little outlier category. It used to be a 7.3. It used to be like $19, $18, but a couple cards went up in the deck, so now it's worth more than $20, and that does not qualify to be 7.3. you got to keep track of this. Um, I think one way to keep track of that, though, is Moxville.com. If you want to know whether your deck is a 7.3 or a 7.4, just scroll down, and it'll tell you how much your deck costs. You can update the cheapest. Let, let's say you didn't do that. You know, I put my Expedition uh, Watery Grave in this deck. Well, that means my deck's going to be a 7.4. But if I want to switch it out for the cheapest possible version of Watery Grave, or let's say a Demir Guildgate, now my deck's a 7.3. If you, if you get my drift, Moxville.com is the best way to help this. You know, I'm building a Hanada deck right now. It's $20, and I accidentally made it go up to a 7.4 because one card jumped up one cent, and I was exactly at that $20 line. I mean, you want to start pub stomping. You know, when you try to have rule zero, people say... We're bringing 7.3s. You don't want to be that person who's accidentally bringing a 7.4. Exactly. So I made my changes using Moxfield. I could see the total at the bottom, and I made sure my deck was a 7.3. Yeah. Now, now we're going to get to 7.5, and this is probably the most controversial number in our sliding scale here. It's very middle of the road. It's pretty average power level. It's not too weak, but it's also not too strong. This is honestly where most decks are going to fall in the 7 scale, and it could be hard to differentiate between 7.5s, you know? We, we see this all the time. We have a lot of issues sometimes where people say, my deck's a 7.5, and you go, are you playing above $20? And they say, of course, but that, I'm not playing a 7.4. You know, this is really, really hard to tell. And when you have that rule zero talk, you just have to feel it with your heart. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that there's a lot of varieties of 7.5. And you just have to know that some of them are a little bit different than others. An example of this is... BZ's Balmore deck, which is $50, which obviously qualifies it above 7.4. Yes. Or my Atraxa Poison deck, which is worth about 1000 I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, my Balmore deck, you know, I'm trying to make out tokens, trying to pump them, trying to cast a few spells here and there, and then Mia's trying to play Glitzer Elf on turn one and then proliferate eight times, uh, plus one, I guess, and then, then everyone's going to die you know, on turn like six. You know, those are just perfect examples of 7.5. I, I think, think so. these are. I think these are both middle of the road. They're not 99 lands, and they're not what a 7.999 is going to be, which we'll explain later. But it's time for the 7.6s. We're starting to get to the higher end of 7s. You're going to start to see noticeable differences between your 7.2s and, like, your 7.6s. Uh, you might see staples like Ristic Study, Soul Ring could be here, even cards that are as strong as Grave Titan. The, that's a really strong card, I mean... It I'm surprised. It's, I'm surprised it's not bad. And a battlefield and attack. That's really strong. Right. So you're, this is no holds barred. You are not pulling punches. We are making zombie tokens for six mana. Um, and a good example of this type of power level, it's Erdragon. You see it all the time. And you go, you're trying to like cast, classify how good is this Erdragon deck when they say it's a seven. It's a seven point six because it's big and splashy, and it's starting to get to the higher end of sevens. You know it's at the higher end of sevens, too, because they're playing five colors. That's really tough. That's a lot of colors to count, first of all. Yeah, and a lot of their lands are not going to be entering the battlefield tapped. So you know it's not a 7.2. But these are the really, really higher end of Here seven. Here we go, yeah. 7.7. .7. You can tell that these sevens are at the top end of sevens because they start to win around turn seven. Yeah, a lot of the lands in these decks are going to enter the battlefield untapped, maybe even all of them. Uh, Commander Precons cannot qualify. We're, we're past the point. They cannot be 7.7 .7 or above. It's just not going to work, even if you upgrade them a little bit. But I'd like to point out that this is the only type of deck that has to be graded around its pilot. Yes. If you are taking a 7.7 .7 deck and you are new to the game, if you've been playing for less than a year, it is immediately downgraded to a 7.6. Keep this in mind because a lot of new players come to us and they're like, hey, I want to build a 7.7. .7, and we say, no, you're not ready. You can't. 
uh, you have to play the game for eight more months before you can have a 7.7. Right now, sorry, kid, 7.6. When was your magic anniversary? If you can't tell me that and you say, ah, it was almost a year, it's a 7.6 and you know it. And so, so let's stop pub stomping, right? Like this is an honest message. Like stop bringing 7.7s to 7.6s tables if you're not a 7.7, .7, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's pretty easy to understand. For an example of this deck, I have a 7.7 .7 deck. I have Dargo and Kaidel. It's like a Cascade deck. And if you've been following along up until now, you'll know why it's a 7.7. .7. It's because Dargo costs seven mana. I mean, I think this makes it very obvious. You've been playing for at least a year and Dargo costs seven. So of course it's a 7.7. .7. I, mean, I, I think the viewers get it. Yeah, yeah. It could we start, don't need to elaborate. It could start winning the game on turn seven. You know the deal. Uh, we got to get to 7.8s though. And this is where things get hairy. As you know, with 7.8s, nothing is better than a 7.8. You really can't beat it. Not going to happen. And the rule of 7.8 is the only card that is banned from 7.8 decklist is Thassa's Oracle. Everything else is legal. So there's, there's no question about, are we playing for fun? Are we playing to win? You're playing to win. There's no cards that are, that are, that are frowned upon except Thassa's Oracle. This is the only point in our in our scale here that has a card that's that's it's considered banned in every in every uh play group in every tournament it's a very niche corner of the format actually only 99.8 percent of all commander deck lists that have ever been built adhere to this rule you know the commander rules committee really talked about 7.8 it's actually a little subsection of their website you have to go behind a few little tabs but i think it's really important to notice that this is for 7.8 only Right, yeah, so let's get to two examples. We actually have two examples. The first one is Silvala, Heart of the Wilds. Now, this is a green commander deck, so it can't have blue cards in it. And Thassa's Oracle is blue, so this must fall into a 7.8, as long as it's not $20 or less, obviously. That would be a 7.8. Three. Uh, so Salvala is going to be going to be going to be unable to include Thassa's Oracle. So any Salvala deck, whether it's casual, competitive, cutthroat, Battle Cruiser, Voltron, it's a 7.8. Absolutely. Another one is Winota, Joiner of Forces. It's also not blue, so it can't play Thassa's Oracle. Right. You know, there's only a, one difference between Winota decks at this point is basically just, do your lands come in tapped or not? Because if they're coming in all tapped, it's a 7.2, as we mentioned before. But now, because you know it's if it's if if they come in, if any land comes in untapped, it's a 7.8 because it can't run Thassa's Oracle. And then our last example here, we actually have three examples. Uh, Tauran Sky Summoner, and this is going to be a deck that doesn't have Thassa's Oracle in it. Theoretically, you would think you could play it, but if you're aiming for a 7.8, you can't include it. Any other card is fair game. Absolutely. Just because it can run Thassa's Oracle does not mean it should. And if it's, even though it's blue, you just shouldn't be running your Thassa's Oracles in 7.8s because then you're lying. And right, lying is wrong. That's called kingmaking, and we don't we do not do that here. Uh, time for the highest, though, among the seven scale. This is 7.9. Uh, you might not know what I mean, but it's almost an 8. So we basically, we usually call it 7.999. That might sound more familiar. Or some people call it CEDH. Uh, which stands for competitive EDH or competitive commander. This is this is the highest power seven you'll ever see. This ha these have your stacks pieces, your partner commanders, your free spells, and your combo wins. This is aiming to win as soon as possible. And yes, of course, you can play Thassa's Oracle in here because it's above 7.8. Right. You just have to know that you're building a 7.9. And as long as you know that ahead of time, like with Moxville.com, uh, I think they have an actually a button between what power level you're building and a 7 scale. So Thassa's Oracle, it's legal again. Um, there's no holds barred. There actually is just no, there's no holds barred at all. Uh, an example of this deck, you'll see, you've heard about this a lot, I'm sure, Thrasios Timna with Ad Nauseam, with Thassa's Oracle, with Demonic Consultation. Whenever one of these CEDH people is talking about this deck, they're referring to the deck that is a 7.9 out of 10. And you know, because Thassa's Oracle is in it, they just had to say Thassa's Oracle's in this deck and you go, ah, a 7.99 you have on your hands. Right, right. So you might be wondering, okay, I've, I figured it out. I've got all of these scales from, from 7.0 all the way up to 7.9. You're almost there, but you do need a few more uh, missing pieces. You're going to need the scales of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, and we have that for you. There's the old nitpicking nerds power scale. I know it's a little bit outdated. It doesn't have anything. It doesn't mention any of these decimal points on the sevens, but you just have to kind of skip that, uh, knowing that you have all this information, and go check it out. I think it's going to be really helpful. Absolutely. And what's the tip for the day? Tip for the day is never trust a seven. <laughs>